Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy my video, please click the like button and share the video. It is the only way the YouTube algorithms really notices me. I will be very grateful to you. Weaponized black hole? Government gone mad. Leaked. Chapter 1. Uneasy Departures The year was 2023. A thick silence hung heavy over the launch pad, broken only by the low hum of the Peregrine Humanity's first interstellar vessel. Dr. Evelyn Walsh gripped the railing, her knuckles white. It wasn't just the launch jitters gnawing at her stomach. It was the nightmares, vivid, terrifying visions of a swirling abyss, a monstrous maw of darkness that promised oblivion in its raspy whispers. With a shudder, she forced a smile as the technician, young and wide-eyed, patted her shoulder a little too roughly. Tension crackled in the air, thick enough to taste. The international crew of scientists and engineers, a motley bunch buzzing with nervous excitement, kept a wary distance from the handful of soldiers stationed near a heavily guarded section midship. Project Erebos, as it was ominously called, was a constant source of hushed whispers and worried glances. The soldiers, faces etched with a practiced stoicism, remained an impenetrable wall. Captain Rise, his weathered face etched with the lines of a man who'd seen too much, barked orders, his voice a low growl barely audible over the thrumming engines. The weight of the mission pressed down on him like a physical burden. The Peregrine wasn't just a scientific marvel. It was a symbol of humanity's audacity, a fragile vessel carrying the hopes and dreams of a planet venturing into the unknown. But a nagging unease gnawed at him. The soldier's presence, the cryptic briefings about Erebos, it all cast a long, unsettling shadow over their mission. Countdown echoed across the launch pad, each digit a hammer blow against the tense silence. As the final number reverberated, Evelyn's comm unit chirped, a single, anonymous message flashing on the screen. Beware the abyss. They lied. A jolt of ice shot through her. Who sent this? What lies were they talking about? The roar of the engines drowned out any further thought. The peregrine lurched forward with a groan of protest, a behemoth straining against Earth's cradle. Evelyn clung to the railing, watching the blue marble shrink in the viewport, a single tear tracing a path down her cheek. The journey had begun, and with it, a chilling premonition that the darkness whispered of might be a lot closer than anyone dared to imagine. All right, people, buckle up. A young engineer, barely out of his teens, his voice cracking with nervous bravado, scrambled past her. Evelyn forced another smile, the taste of plastic in her mouth. This was it. There was no turning back. Across the deck, a stocky sergeant with a shaved head barked orders at his squad, his gaze flickering towards the scientists with a mixture of suspicion and contempt. One of the soldiers, a young woman with wary eyes, caught Evelyn's gaze for a fleeting moment. A flicker of something fear, apprehension, passed between them before the soldier snapped her gaze away. The G-forces slammed into Evelyn, pressing her against the railing. The world blurred into a kaleidoscope of light and sound. The cheers and shouts from the launch crew were a distant echo as the Peregrine tore free of Earth's atmosphere, a lone arrow piercing the black void. As the initial shock subsided, Evelyn allowed herself a shaky breath. They were in space, but the journey had only just begun, and the darkness outside wasn't the only thing that threatened to consume them. Chapter 2. The Long Voyage Creeks Weeks bled into one another, a monotonous symphony of whirring engines and the sterile hum of recycled air. The Peregrine, once a marvel of human ingenuity, had become a metal cocoon hurtling through the vast emptiness. Dr. Evelyn Walsh stared out the viewport, the endless expanse of stars, a cold, uncaring canvas. The nightmares had receded, 
replaced by a gnawing unease fueled by the anonymous message. Driven by a sense of urgency, Evelyn began her investigation. The message mentioned lies, and Project Erebos was a festering sore on the ship, shrouded in secrecy. She scoured restricted databanks, her heart hammering against her ribs with every unauthorized access attempt. Fragments of information materialized cryptic references to energy manipulation, event horizons, and containment field. The word sent shivers down her spine. Event horizons? Were they toying with black holes? A low rumble echoed through the corridor as Evelyn rounded a corner, nearly colliding with a broad-shouldered soldier. He wore a scowl as deep as the space they were hurtling through. Sergeant Ramirez, the ever-present shadow guarding the Project Erebos entrance. His gaze flickered across her lab coat, a flicker of something she couldn't decipher passing through his dark eyes. Lost, Doctor. His voice was a rough rasp, laced with suspicion. Just curious, Evelyn stammered, forcing a smile. She couldn't explain her sudden interest in classified projects without raising red flags. Ramirez's scowl deepened. This area is restricted. Best keep your curiosity leashed. He gestured towards the reinforced door behind him, the silence from the other side oppressive. The flickering lights above them sputtered, plunging the corridor into momentary darkness. A cold sweat prickled on Evelyn's skin. It was just a power fluctuation, a rational part of her brain insisted. Yet, a whisper seemed to rise from the vents, a chilling hiss that sent a tremor down her spine. It was gone as quickly as it came, leaving behind an unsettling silence. Ramirez seemed unfazed his gaze flickering to the flickering lights with a flicker of annoyance. Just another glitch, he muttered, his voice laced with a hint of something fear. Evelyn forced a reassuring smile. Glitches happen, she echoed, her voice sounding hollow even to her own ears. The unsettling whispers, the cryptic message, Ramirez's guarded demeanor, it was all weaving a tapestry of unease that threatened to unravel her sanity. She had to find out the truth, no matter the cost. The long voyage, once monotonous, now felt fraught with a hidden danger. A danger that lurked not just in the vast emptiness beyond the hall, but within the very heart of the peregrine itself. Chapter 3. Whispers in the Dark Sleep was a luxury Evelyn could no longer afford. The flickering lights, and the unsettling whispers that seemed to seep from the vents gnawed at her sanity. Driven by a desperate need to confide in someone, she sought out Dr. Tanaka, a brilliant astrophysicist with a dry wit and a calming presence. As she recounted the anonymous message and her growing suspicions about Project Erebos, Tanaka's eyebrows furrowed. Black holes? He scoffed, disbelieving chuckle escaping his lips. Evelyn, those things are theoretical nightmares, not something you weaponize and stick on a spaceship. Despite his skepticism, a flicker of concern flickered in his eyes. Evelyn pressed on, detailing the fragments of data she'd unearthed. By the time she finished, Tanaka's face was grim. There's something they're not telling us, he muttered, his voice laced with a newfound seriousness. United by suspicion, they hatched a plan, a risky foray, into the restricted area housing project Erebos. Navigating a labyrinth of dimly lit corridors, they bypassed security protocols with a mix of luck and Tanaka's hacking skills. Finally, they stumbled upon a hidden doorway, a steel monstrosity emblazoned with a single chilling symbol, a swirling black vortex. A low hum emanated from behind the door, a sound that sent shivers down Evelyn's spine. Suddenly, a rough hand clamped over Evelyn's mouth. Sergeant Ramirez, his face etched with a mixture of fear and determination, stood before them. What are you doing here? He hissed, his voice barely a whisper. Relief flooded Evelyn. Sergeant, thank God. We, she began, 
sputtering with relief. Ramirez cut her off. It's worse than you think, Doc, he said, his voice low and urgent. Colonel Vargas, he's not right. Something about that project it's messing with his head, ours too. He gestured vaguely towards the hidden lab. Tanaka scoffed, but the tremor in his voice betrayed his bravado. Ramirez continued, his voice a hushed whisper. There have been incidents, crew members hearing voices, seeing things. A blood-curdling scream echoed from deeper within the ship. Evelyn whipped around, her heart hammering against her ribs. What was that? She whispered, her voice barely audible. Ramirez's face paled. Follow me, he muttered, his voice laced with a desperate urgency. He led them deeper into the restricted zone, not towards the hidden lab, but in the opposite direction. A short distance away, they stumbled upon a horrifying scene. A crew member lay sprawled on the floor, his eyes wide with terror, his face contorted in a silent scream. Bruises marred his pale skin, hinting at a violent struggle. The air hung heavy with the metallic tang of blood. Evelyn's stomach lurched. This was no accident. Project Airbows, whatever it was, was no longer just a secret. It was a nightmare manifesting in terrifying ways, and the Peregrine was hurtling deeper into the abyss, carrying a darkness that threatened to consume them all. Chapter 4. Confrontation and Betrayal The grisly discovery in the corridor hung heavy in the air. Evelyn and Tanaka, their faces pale with horror, recounted the scene to Captain Rice. The stoic commander listened, his expression unreadable. Finally, after a tense silence, he sighed, a world-weary sound. Project Erebos, he muttered, the name heavy on his tongue. It's not what you think. Evelyn scoffed. Not what we think. There's a dead crew member outside your secret lab, Captain. What exactly are we supposed to think? Ray steepled his fingers, his gaze distant. A deterrent. A weapon of last resort. He explained the government's plan a weaponized black hole, a terrifying force to hold back any potential alien threats lurking in the vast expanse of space. Evelyn and Tanaka exchanged a horrified glance. A weaponized black hole, Tanaka exclaimed, his voice laced with disbelief. That's madness. Do they have any idea what they're dealing with? Rees remained impassive. They believe the benefits outweigh the risks, but a flicker of doubt clouded his eyes, a chink in the captain's stoic facade. Suddenly, the door burst open. Sergeant Ramirez, his face grim, charged in, his hand gripping a confiscated energy pistol. They're on to us, Captain, he panted, his voice laced with urgency. Colonel Vargas knows. Rice cursed under his breath. Vargas, the ruthless head of Project Erebos, was a man obsessed, a true believer in the weapon's power. His blind faith bordered on fanaticism. A tense standoff ensued. Vargas, flanked by his heavily armed soldiers, stormed into the room, his eyes blazing with fury. He accused Evelyn and Tanaka of espionage, of jeopardizing the mission, of treason. This stops now. He bellowed, his voice echoing in the confined space. Take them into custody. Ramirez, his loyalty torn, hesitated. Evelyn locked eyes with him, a silent plea etched on her face. With a resolute nod, Ramirez lowered his weapon at Vargas, but instead of surrendering, he pointed it at the soldiers. Stand down, he roared, his voice surprisingly steady. This is madness. This project, it's not right. A tense silence stretched, punctuated only by the ragged breaths of the soldiers. Vargas's face contorted in a mask of rage. Betrayal, he roared, lunging for his own sidearm. Before Vargas could react, Ramirez fired. A single deafening shot 
echoed in the room. Vargas crumpled to the floor, a crimson stain blooming on his uniform. Chaos erupted. The soldiers, caught off guard, scrambled for cover. Ramirez grabbed Evelyn's arm, his grip urgent. Go, he shouted, his voice hoarse. Tell the world what you've seen. Evelyn, heart pounding a frantic rhythm against her ribs, hesitated for a fleeting moment. Then, with a last grateful look at the soldier who had become her unlikely ally, she turned and fled, leaving behind the carnage and the chilling truth about Project Erebos. Chapter 5. Descent into Madness. Evelyn stumbled through the corridors, adrenaline coursing through her veins. Reaching her lab, she slammed the door shut, the flimsy barrier a poor defense against the growing chaos outside. Her mind raced. Ramirez's sacrifice bought her precious time, but time for what? Driven by a desperate need for answers, she dove into the data Tanaka had managed to download from Project Erebo's hidden lab. The technical jargon swam before her eyes, yet a horrifying truth began to crystallize. The weapon wasn't a mere singularity, a point of immense gravity. It was alive. The data spoke of a consciousness imprint, a horrifying notion that suggested the black hole, in its miniature form, held a twisted sentience. It fed on fear, on despair, its power growing with the crew's mounting terror. A cold sweat slicked Evelyn's skin, the whispers in the vents, the hallucinations, it all made a horrifying kind of sense. Project Erebos wasn't just a weapon, it was a parasite feeding on the crew's sanity. The silence outside was shattered by a blood-curdling scream. A shudder racked Evelyn as the horrifying implications sunk in. This wasn't a mere scientific experiment gone wrong. It was a descent into madness orchestrated by a living nightmare at the heart of the ship. Fear, a primal and insidious monster, began to gnaw at the edges of her resolve. The leaked message, she realized with a jolt, wasn't a warning, but a desperate plea. A plea from a previous scientist, someone who had stumbled upon the same horrifying truth and met a grisly fate. Suddenly, the intercom crackled to life. Colonel Vargas's voice boomed through the speakers, his tone laced with a chilling calm. He painted a picture of an alien threat, a lurking menace the crew desperately needed Project Eribos to combat. His words, amplified by the terror gripping the ship, resonated with a horrifying effectiveness. Evelyn listened, a growing sense of despair threatening to engulf her. Vargas was exploiting the crew's fear, twisting it into a weapon of his own, a weapon that fed the monstrous hunger of the miniature black hole at the ship's core. The once vibrant, bustling peregrine now felt like a tomb, its metal walls closing in on her. The whispers seemed louder, the shadows more menacing. The fight for survival wasn't just against a potential alien threat. It was a fight against the creeping madness that threatened to consume them all, fueled by the very weapon they were supposed to control. Chapter 6. Reaching Out The air crackled, with a tension thicker than the stale, recycled air. Evelyn's lab, once a haven of scientific inquiry, now felt like a cage. Despair threatened to suffocate her, but a flicker of defiance sparked in her eyes. She wouldn't succumb. She had to expose the truth. There was an old, decommissioned communication channel, a relic from a bygone era of interstellar exploration. It was a long shot, a Hail Mary pass into the vast emptiness, but it was her only hope. With trembling fingers, she tapped out a frantic message, detailing Project Erebos, the sentient black hole, and the descent into madness gripping the peregrine. She relayed the truth about the whispers, the hallucinations, and the fear Vargas was exploiting. Sending the message was a leap of faith. It could be intercepted 
dismissed as the ramblings of a paranoid scientist. But it was a risk she had to take. Next, she needed to find Ramirez. He was their only ally, their sole hope for dismantling Project Erebos, or at least sabotaging it. But where would a soldier on the run hide within the steel labyrinth of the ship? Frustration gnawed at her. The comm system was a one-way channel, useless for contacting Ramirez. Every corridor she ventured into held the potential for a terrifying encounter with a crew member driven mad by the black hole's influence. Suddenly, the ship lurched violently, throwing Evelyn off balance. A low hum, unlike any she'd heard before, resonated through the metal hull. Panic clawed at her throat. Was Vargas activating the weapon? A chilling announcement crackled through the intercom. Vargas's voice, devoid of its usual forced calm, dripped with a vindictive glee. We have a traitor among us, he declared. Someone has attempted to send a message back to Earth, spreading lies and jeopardizing our mission. Evelyn's blood ran cold. He knew. He'd intercepted her message. The announcement continued, a chilling promise of a purge. Anyone suspected of disloyalty would be dealt with swiftly and harshly. The message served as a grim warning, a chilling reminder of the ruthless hand now holding the fate of the Peregrine and its crew. Evelyn huddled in her lab, the weight of despair threatening to crush her. But amidst the terror, a steely resolve hardened within her. They were on the brink, true, but she wouldn't give up. The fight for survival had become a desperate gamble, a race against time and a descent into madness fueled by a monstrous hunger at the heart of the ship. Chapter 7, Into the Abyss. Panic hammered a frantic tattoo against Evelyn's ribs. Colonel Vargas' announcement was a death knell for anyone who dared question him. She needed to act fast before the madness Vargas unleashed consumed the entire ship. A memory sparked in her mind. A fleeting conversation with a quiet, unassuming engineer named Kim. Kim, with his gentle demeanor and knack for coaxing temperamental machinery into submission, had always seemed genuinely interested in her work. He wasn't part of the elite crew assigned to project Erebos, but perhaps, just perhaps, he could be persuaded to help. Taking a deep breath, Evelyn navigated the corridors, each footstep echoing in the tense silence. She found Kim hunched over a flickering console, his face etched with worry. Relief flooded her. He hadn't been swept up in Vargas Purge yet. Kim, she blurted, her voice ragged. We need to talk. It's about Project Erebos. Kim's eyes widened in alarm, but before he could protest, Evelyn launched into a hurried explanation. She spoke of the sentient black hole, the whispers driving the crew mad, and Vargas's plan to activate the weapon. Kim listened, his face a mask of growing horror. We have to stop him, he finally whispered, his voice thick with urgency. But how? Evelyn outlined a desperate plan, a last-ditch effort to sabotage the project's core before Vargas could activate it. It was a risky gamble, a dance with a miniature god of oblivion. Kim, his face grim, readily agreed. They navigated the labyrinthine corridors, Kim's familiarity with the ship's layout proving invaluable. The air grew colder, the whispers seemed louder, clawing at the edges of their sanity. The closer they got to Project Erebo's hidden lab, the stronger the black hole's influence became. Disturbing visions flickered in Evelyn's mind, swirling abysses, gnashing maws of darkness. Kim muttered under his breath, clutching his head as if warding off an unseen attacker. The whispers, once insidious, now morphed into a cacophony of screams and maddening pronouncements, threatening to drown out all rational thought. Finally, they reached the heavily guarded entrance. Kim, his hands shaking, bypassed the security protocols with a series of deft maneuvers. Inside, 
The air crackled with a malevolent energy, the hum of the black hole, a physical presence. As they approached the core, a chilling realization dawned on Evelyn. They were too late. The activation sequence had already begun. A countdown timer blinked ominously on a nearby console. Time was running out. Chapter 8, A Glimpse Beyond. Adrenaline coursed through Evelyn's veins, drowning out the cacophony of whispers that threatened to unravel her sanity. Kim, his face pale with a mixture of fear and determination, stood beside her as they examined the project's core, a swirling vortex of energy held in check by a complex web of machinery. Evelyn frantically searched for a weak point, a critical system to overload and disrupt the activation sequence. Time was a relentless tide, pulling them towards an abyss. Finally, she spotted a potential target, a conduit channeling raw energy directly into the black hole's core. With a trembling hand, she initiated a controlled overload. A jolt of energy surged through the lab, momentarily plunging them into darkness. A deafening screech echoed through the chamber as alarms blared to life. The malfunction was immediate and brutal. Lights flickered erratically, casting grotesque shadows that danced across the walls. Suddenly, the gravity field flickered. Evelyn felt a sickening weightlessness, the floor seeming to disappear beneath her feet. A scream tore from her throat as she was ripped from Kim's grasp, propelled towards the swirling vortex at the heart of the lab. In that split second, the world dissolved into chaos. The very fabric of reality seemed to bend and twist around her. She glimpsed a churning sea of darkness, an infinite expanse of nothingness punctuated by flashes of blinding light. A crushing sense of existential dread washed over her, threatening to consume her whole. The return to normal gravity was as brutal as the descent. Evelyn slammed back onto the cold metal floor, gasping for breath, her vision blurred. Kim rushed to her side, his face etched with terror. What happened? He rasped, his voice barely audible over the cacophony of alarms. Evelyn shook her head, unable to find the words to describe the glimpse of the abyss she'd witnessed. It wasn't just the raw physical power of the black hole that terrified her. It was the feeling a chilling certainty that this weapon wasn't designed to merely destroy matter. It sought to unleash a torrent of unimaginable horror to break the very minds of those it touched. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream pierced the noise. They whipped around to see a crew member, his eyes wide with terror, clawing at his own head. His screams morphed into a maddening gibberish as he convulsed on the floor his body contorting in unnatural ways. Ramirez, who had been hiding within the ventilation system near the lab, watched the scene through a grate, his heart hammering against his ribs. The crewman's horrifying transformation left no room for doubt. Project Erebos wasn't just a weapon of mass destruction. It was a weapon of mass insanity, a nightmare waiting to be unleashed upon the universe. Now, Evelyn and Kim, with the malfunction as their grim testament, knew the full extent of the horror they were facing. Chapter 9, Desperate Alliances. The malfunction had subsided, leaving behind an unsettling silence punctuated only by the ragged gasps of the afflicted crew member. Evelyn scrambled to her feet, her body trembling with a mixture of adrenaline and existential dread. Kim stared at the contorted figure on the floor, his face a mask of horror. We have to stop this, Evelyn rasped, her voice hoarse. That that wasn't just a malfunction. It was a glimpse into what Vargas intends to unleash. She explained her horrifying vision, the raw power of the black hole, and the chilling certainty that it wasn't just aimed at physical destruction. Project Erebos, was a weapon of madness, designed to twist and shatter the minds of anyone caught in its grasp. A low groan echoed from the ventilation shaft above them. 
Ramirez, his face pale but resolute, emerged from the shadows. I saw, he muttered, his voice tight. I saw what happened to that crewman. You're right, Doc. This, this is madness. Relief washed over Evelyn. They weren't alone. Ramirez, despite the danger, had chosen to stand with them. We need a plan, Kim chimed in, his voice regaining a semblance of its usual calm. A desperate one, but a plan nonetheless. They huddled together, their voices hushed whispers against the ominous silence of the ship. The situation was dire. Vargas, fueled by a twisted sense of purpose, wouldn't hesitate to activate the weapon. Time was a relentless tide pulling them towards a horrifying abyss. Their plan was audacious, a three-pronged attack aimed at crippling Project Erebos. Evelyn, with a heavy heart, volunteered to overload the project's core, attempting a controlled shutdown. The risk was immense, but it was the only way to sever the connection with the black hole. Kim, ever the resourceful engineer, would reroute emergency power to critical systems during the shutdown. This would plunge the ship into temporary chaos, but hopefully buy them enough time to complete their objective. Finally, Ramirez, leveraging his knowledge of the ship's layout, would create a diversion. He would draw Vargas and his remaining loyal soldiers away from the project Erebos Lab, buying Evelyn and Kim the precious moments they needed. It was a desperate gamble, a last-ditch effort to avert a disaster of unimaginable proportions. They knew the odds were stacked against them, but they had no other choice. Fate of the Peregrine, and potentially the universe beyond, rested on their shoulders. They would fight, with every ounce of their courage and ingenuity, to stop the Weapon of Madness from being unleashed. Chapter 10 The House of Horrors A deafening roar tore through the ship, drowning out the cacophony of alarms. Lights flickered and died, plunging the corridors into an inky blackness. Panic surged through Evelyn, but she forced it down, relying on muscle memory to navigate the familiar path. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, weaving nightmarish visions into the fabric of reality's swirling abysses. Gnashing maws of darkness, horrifying echoes of the crew member's transformation. The closer she got to the lab, the stronger the black hole's influence became, a malevolent force tugging at her sanity. Meanwhile, in the engineering bay, Kim wrestled with a different kind of horror. The overload initiated by Evelyn had unleashed chaos. Alarms blared a symphony of warnings, the ship groaning in protest as power grids overloaded and life support sputtered. He fought to maintain control, fingers dancing across the console, rerouting emergency power to maintain minimal life support and propulsion. Sweat slicked his brow, his knuckles white as he grappled with the cascading failures. Every surge of energy sent a jolt through the ship, threatening to tear it apart. Back in the darkened corridor, Evelyn finally stumbled upon the reinforced door guarding Project Erebos. Relief flooded her momentarily, only to be replaced by a surge of terror as she saw the security systems flickering back online. Time was running out. With a shaking hand, she bypassed the reactivating protocols, a desperate prayer forming on her lips. The heavy door slid open, revealing the swirling vortex of Project Erebos at its heart. The black hole thrummed with an unsettling energy, a malevolent presence that threatened to consume her whole. Suddenly, a different kind of chaos erupted from down the corridor. Ramirez had launched his diversion. Explosions echoed throughout the ship, interspersed with shouts and the panicked barks of orders. A welcome distraction, even if temporary. Evelyn took a deep breath, the fate of the Peregrine, and perhaps the universe hanging in the balance. Reaching for the control panel, she initiated the final, desperate move, the overload sequence. The ship shuddered violently, 
a testament to the raw power she was unleashing. The world dissolved into blinding light, and Evelyn braced herself for the outcome of potential shutdown or a catastrophic failure. Chapter 11, The Brink of Madness. The reinforced door hissed open, revealing a sight that both terrified and mesmerized Evelyn. Project Erebos pulsed at the heart of the chamber, a technological marvel intertwined with an unnatural energy that made her skin crawl. The swirling vortex at its center hummed with an otherworldly power, beckoning and repelling her in equal measure. Taking a deep breath, she approached the control panel, its surface cold and metallic beneath her trembling fingers. With each step closer, the whispers intensified, a cacophony of voices clawing at the edges of her sanity. Vivid visions assaulted her galaxies, imploding, stars extinguished, the universe itself consumed by the insatiable hunger of the black hole. Join us, the whispers hissed, promising oblivion as a twisted form of peace. Embrace the void. Let go. Evelyn gritted her teeth, forcing her gaze on the control panel. On a holographic display, she saw the activation sequence running in reverse, a countdown to the overload. Every tick of the virtual clock resonated with a tremor through the ship, a testament to the immense power she was trying to control. Suddenly, the door clanged shut with a resounding boom. Evelyn spun around, heart hammering against her ribs. Colonel Vargas, his face contorted with a manic zeal, stood in the doorway. His eyes blazed with a terrifying certainty, a blind faith in the power of Project Erebos. You will not stop this, he roared, his voice distorted by a mix of rage and fanaticism. He lunged for her, a crazed glint in his eyes. A guttural yell echoed from behind Vargas. Ramirez, his face bruised and bloodied, had tackled him to the ground. A brutal fight ensued, a desperate struggle for control amidst the humming vortex of the black hole. Meanwhile, in the engineering bay, the overload reached its peak. Alarms blared an incessant symphony of warnings as the ship groaned under the strain. Kim, sweat pouring down his face, fought a desperate battle against the failing systems. He pushed every ounce of his engineering expertise into keeping life support functional and preventing a catastrophic meltdown. Back in the lab, Evelyn wrestled with Vargas, his strength fueled by a twisted sense of purpose. The overload sequence on the console ticked closer to zero, each passing second a gamble with the fate of the ship. The whispers in her head reached a fever pitch, promising oblivion as a release from the chaos. A deafening crack echoed through the chamber, the lights flickering wildly. Was it the overload or the ship breaking apart? Evelyn squeezed her eyes shut, bracing for the outcome. The line between reality and the horrifying visions blurred, her sanity hanging by a thread. In that moment, she wasn't just fighting for the peregrine, she was fighting for her own mind, teetering on the brink of madness in the face of the black hole's terrifying influence. Chapter 12, Aftermath and Uncertainties. Silence, thick, and suffocating settled over the peregrine. The incessant wail of alarms had been replaced by an eerie quiet broken only by the ragged gasps of Ramirez and the hiss of escaping steam. Evelyn, her body battered and bruised, lay sprawled on the cold metal floor, staring up at the gaping hole where the Project Erebos lab once resided. The overload had been successful at a terrible cost. The lab was a twisted wreck, Vargas presumed dead under a mountain of debris. To true horror, however, lingered in the air a heavy, oppressive silence that spoke of a dormant power, a chilling possibility that the connection with the black hole might not be severed after all. Ramirez, his face a mask of exhaustion and relief, stumbled towards her and offered a hand. Evelyn took it gratefully, the warmth the grounding presence against the lingering whispers that still echoed faintly in the recesses of her mind. Kim, his face drawn, 
emerged from the engineering bay, his eyes filled with a haunted weariness. The three survivors, bound by their shared ordeal, surveyed the wreckage. Peregrine was a crippled vessel, barely limping back towards Earth. The journey would be long, a testament to their desperate struggle. A single, nagging question gnawed at Evelyn. Had they truly won? Or had they merely delayed the inevitable? Did the black hole, a sentient entity of unimaginable power, still lurk within the ship, a silent predator biding its time? The answer, like the future that awaited them on Earth, remained shrouded in uncertainty. Would the world believe their story, a tale of a rogue colonel, a sentient black hole, and a desperate gamble that nearly tore their ship apart? Or would they be dismissed as crazy survivors, the ramblings of a space mission gone horribly wrong? The weight of their experience, the burden of the truth, and the chilling possibility of a dormant evil settled heavily on their shoulders as they stared out of the viewport at the endless expanse of space. The journey home was far from over, and the true test they knew was yet to come.